Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Brave Kids Art Club. My name is Brad and I'm so excited that you guys came to draw with me today. Today we have a very special animal that we're going to be drawing, but sadly it's also a very endangered animal. Do you know what it means for an animal to be endangered? Basically it means that that animal is in danger of disappearing forever. There will be no more of that animal alive here on the earth. Sadly, this has happened to a lot of different animals and we don't want to keep that happening. So today's animal is not picked by you and it wasn't picked by me. It was actually picked by our good friends over at 1 million one month. Their goal is to raise awareness of the over 1 million endangered species here on the planet by asking different artists to draw these animals each day for one month. And today is actually the very first day of this month long project. So go check out 1 million one month. You can see all their information in the description below. You can look them up on Instagram at 1 million one month all written out. And this is actually the second year they've done this. So they have already a past year's worth of amazing, beautiful art of these endangered animals. Okay, so the animal they asked me to draw was a wombat. Now, not all wombats are endangered, but the largest of the three different types of wombats is called the Northern Hairy-Nosed Wombat, and that one is definitely endangered. So that's gonna be the one that we're drawing today. All right, so are you guys ready to start drawing? Perfect, okay. Well, let's make sure we have everything that we need. All right, make sure you have a nice clean sheet of paper out. Make sure you have a sharpened pencil with an eraser somewhere handy because we're gonna do a lot of sketching. And then over top of that sketch, we're gonna use a dark pen or a marker to draw our outlines. Finally, we're gonna get to my favorite part, which is the coloring. So let's get started with our sketch. All right, let's start with a big oval here in the middle. Now, I'm not gonna go too far on the sides, but I'm gonna try to get a big oval in the middle. Now this is why we're using a pencil because it's kind of hard to get this perfect on the first go. So we'll just kind of keep drawing those lines a little bit until we get a nice oval shape. I might want to go a little bit more rounded. There we go. Let's do another circle right here and it's not, their head's actually not going to be a circle but it'll at least give us a good idea of where that head will, will go and how big it is compared to the rest of the body. So I'm gonna kinda do, let's see, something like that. Let's try to draw the back leg. Let's do a little backwards C shape here for the, the back leg. Now that might be a little too far back, let's see. Pretty good, I'm feeling like that head's gonna have to be a little bit bigger. All right, so let's go ahead and draw the arm right here. It's another little curved shape. We'll bring that forward a little bit and then maybe we'll do Let's do that. And then let's do, let's take this line that we already created, this curve from the outside of our oval, and we'll just have that kind of come back right here. So we'll just kind of work off of that right there. All right, so let's see if we can do a little back foot right here. I'm gonna draw, just right now, I'm gonna do some little ovals, and then we can kind of detail those out a little bit later but they have actually little, almost like little fingers because they're really good at digging. They're really good at digging and burrowing. That's actually where they live. They live underground. They don't really climb in trees even though they're really closely related to the koala. And we learned when we drew koalas that koalas spend all their time up in trees. Well, wombats do not. So what do they have in common with koalas? Well, wombats are marsupials, which means they do what? That's right, they have a pouch. So we learned that twice actually. We had kangaroos that we drew, we also drew koalas, and they both are marsupials. And this is the other marsupial that I've been waiting to draw, is the wombat. So it'll have a pouch, but the difference is, is the pouch doesn't open up from the top, it actually opens up from the bottom. So the little babies will crawl in from the bottom because when they're burrowing in their holes, that way dirt doesn't fill up inside their pouch. Pretty smart, huh? Let's do the shape. I, their head is kind of like this shape. I'll, I'll, I'll just start drawing it here. They kind of have it squared off a little bit on here, some lines right there. And their cheeks kind of come out a little ways. They got little puffy cheeks. Kind of like a chipmunk. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like they have multiple chins and necks there because they got they're kind of rolly. So we'll go like this. A little, little chubby, cute animals. 
Let's draw the nose. Now their nose is pretty iconic, kind of like the koala too. They got that big nose. These wombats kind of have it too. And so these, this hairy nose wombat, the difference is, is the actual hair on their nose. Um, but they look pretty much like other wombats. They, they do have bigger ears and they are larger and maybe a slightly different color of their fur, which are some really big differences. But it looks like a wombat. If we're drawing the northern hairy nose or any of the other two, it still feels like a wombat because they look very similar. Okay, so we kind of got this squared off nose. Almost looks like a home plate for a baseball, just upside down there. Uh, let's see what else. Maybe we'll draw a little circle around this to kind of show where the mouth is because it comes out a little bit. Most animals, their snout comes out a little bit further. So let's draw a circle to kind of show where that's going to be. And let's follow the line of that circle and we'll just kind of bring it in and we'll just kind of have a little little spot for where the mouth meets up. Like that. These little curves right here. And then we'll do a little chin. Just draw a little U shape right here underneath for the chin. Let's draw some eyeballs. We'll draw two eyeballs right here and right here on the corners of that circle. There we go. And they also have a little line right here in their nose. Okay, well maybe we should do the pupils too, <laughs> just so we know. I'm gonna have them looking right at us. So instead of putting the pupil, I'm gonna make them bigger so it looks friendlier, but instead of drawing them right in the middle of their eye, I'm gonna do them a little slightly cross-eyed. Slightly cross-eyed so it looks like it's looking at you. That's just how it works. And then maybe we'll do a few little extra lines right here to make it look like they're a little bit chubbier and got chubbier cheeks. <laughs> there we go. Maybe I might also do this too. Just round that up because the fur kind of comes out like that on their face. If you see a picture of them, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to erase this little part right here at the top and maybe these lines that are coming in because I don't want to draw those at the very end. With the, I don't want to color those in with a marker. And maybe I'll kind of do a flatter top of the head. They have a pretty unique shaped head. And then I'm going to add a uh, an ear. Like I said, their ears on the northern hairy-nosed wombats, they're actually bigger than most wombats. They're also just a lot bigger in general. But we'll make those ears bigger too. So you got one ear. We're kind of doing like a little two curves right here, almost like a football shape or a leaf shape. You can tell I'm missing sports, <laughs> using a lot of sports terms. Okay, there we go. You know, but for being pretty pudgy, they can actually run, they can move pretty fast. They waddle when they walk, which is kind of funny looking because they've really got really short legs, which are these little guys right here. They're actually pretty short and stubby because they burrow. They don't really need to run around so much. They'll hide in their, in their holes. But um, they can actually move pretty quick. They can go up to like 25 miles per hour, which is, you know, as fast as you drive a car in your neighborhood, which is pretty fast. Okay, instead of having the belly go drag all the way on the ground, I might bring it up a little bit right there. And then up here, I'll just do a line right there. So now I can go back and start erasing some of these little, these little details here that are overla overlapping because I don't want to draw those in the end. Now, like I said, they, they dig a ton, and so they have these like almost little fingers here. So I'm gonna do, instead of just having it be an oval, I'm gonna go in here and kind of add three different fingers. Now, they probably more than that, but I'm gonna go and just do the three, just because it'll get kind of messy to draw if I do more fingers. And we get the idea. There you go. They kind of got longer little fingers that they dig with. Isn't that a cool fact about their pouches? I had no idea that their pouches were, were reversed. They're upside down so the babies can get in there and when they crawl around in those holes, they don't fill it full of dirt. I wondered how that worked. All right, I think I'm ready to do my outline. Are you guys all caught up with the sketch? If not, you guys can just pause it and catch up and then meet me at the, at the marker phase here where I'm doing my outlines. Uh, I'm gonna add a few of the little details with my marker 
but I might, I'll might i draw them really quick just so you can see what I'm gonna do. I'm probably gonna add a few little lines like this throughout for the hair to kind of show that it's hairy. Hair right there, especially on the nose. Northern hairy nosed <laughs> wombat. And then uh, I'll probably add a few more little right here. You can add whiskers, they do have whiskers. What else? I'm, yeah, I'll probably add a few more back here. Just a few little details that I'll add to make it look hairier, furrier, because it's kind of hard on some of these animals. We just draw a plain shape and it has really smooth edges when they actually have hair. But you don't need to do a ton, just enough to show that there are hairs on our animal. So let me jump straight into my outlining. I'm gonna go and do the main shape first. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Oh. There we go. Gonna draw that back foot first. And then get that leg in there. They kind of look like giant guinea pigs. You ever seen a guinea pig? I used to have a bunch of guinea pigs as a kid and they were so cute. But yeah, they kind of look like big guinea pigs. They're actually similar to the size of a badger here in the US. So for all you US viewers who don't see wombats because wombats only live in Australia and Tasmania, and you haven't seen one and you do know what a badger is, it's about that size. Yeah, they only live out there in Australia and I think that's part of the reason why they're endangered because they don't live in a lot of other places and where they're at, they're competing for food with lots of other animals like goats and sheep and other like cattle that are kind of grazing around in the areas that they live. So they're fighting for the same types of foods and uh, they're just, they're not getting enough food so they're not able to go on and keep living in those areas. And it's really sad that we're losing these really amazing animals. But we can help. So as artists, we're drawing, and you can help too by drawing your wombat and sharing what you know about it and how it's endangered and how we need to help it. And maybe you don't have any money to go and send to really help, the, help them, you know, not being endangered, but you can also let other people know just by drawing your picture and showing it and telling people about it. And so people who do have money can donate and help them out. Okay, let's do the ears right here. Let you on the top there. Most animals are endangered because of things that us humans do. We build where their homes are, or we have our other animals that we eat, like cows and chickens and things like that, and sheep and goats, and we let them roam around in the ground, and uh, they eat a lot of the food that these animals would normally eat. They take over those areas. Or, we're, or we pollute, we throw garbage in the ocean or you know, on, the, on the ground at the parks and things and it makes it so that other animals are in danger. So we need to do our part to help these animals. And hopefully by learning a little bit about each of these animals, we're learning to appreciate how cool they are and how important they are and how special each, each individual animal is. Speaking of special, this is not to take away from my tone, but you want to hear a really cool fact about wombats? Like really cool, not gross, just interesting. Okay, wombats can poop cubes. That means squares, their poop is square. I don't even know how it's done, but their body does it. I thought that was so interesting slash really cool. Pooping cubes. All right, I'm gonna do a little line right here just to kind of show where their hair separates kind of on their head. And maybe I'll do the, maybe I'll do the nose next. Let's do, an, yeah, let's do the nose. So it's, I'm gonna draw a little bit more rounded than I have it. I'm gonna kind of round it off at the top and come down and then I'll go kind of straight down with it.
And then I'll draw that line right here in the middle. It's got a little separation right in the middle, a little dent right in the middle of their nose. I thought that was kind of a unique characteristic, so I wanted to make sure to draw that. You can really tell that it's a wombat. All right, let's draw this part of the mouth. I'll do the same thing over here. There we go, and I'm not gonna continue it all the way over. I don't think it needs to. You could do it if you'd like to. And I'm gonna give them the chin for the bottom of their mouth, and now the eyes. Okay, let's see. Those circles are scary. Okay, <laughs> okay, I think that's a pretty good circle. I'm a little nervous to draw this one. It's hard to draw really geometric shapes without the help of a tool. So if you're drawing this big enough and you have something that's round, you can just circle around it and trace it. And that should help you out. All right, so let's put that, I'm gonna erase a little bit so I can see what I'm doing here. So I don't get confused with the other lines I have. Okay, now I'm gonna go right in the middle. I'm gonna start, I usually start a little smaller with the pupil and I get it bigger because I can't take away the marker, but I can't add the marker. So I'll start small and work my way bigger and bigger and bigger. That looks a little crazy. So we're gonna make that eye even bigger until it doesn't look super crazy, until it looks just cute. Oh, it's starting to look cuter. The bigger that pupil is, the cuter it gets. Okay, and let's draw this other eyeball pupil right here. How's that going? Maybe that's still a little bit bigger right here is what I need to do. Ooh, it's looking a little cross-eyed until I make it maybe just one bigger. There we go, it's not looking cross-eyed anymore. I gotta figure out a name. Maybe I'll just go straight for Harry. I like that name, Harry the Harry-nosed Wombat. I like that, nice and simple. Okay, so now I wanna add just a little bit more fur details. So I'm just gonna go through, and you can do whatever you want here. This is, this is just how I wanna draw my wombat. So I'm just gonna draw some little, little fur lines right there. Maybe a few more right here. Some going up over the eyes. And a few more up here. There we go. You don't have to draw them over the whole body because we kind of get the idea after you draw a few of them that there's fur. I'll draw another one right there. Let's see, where else? Maybe some more in the back. They actually have really thick skin right here on their bums because when they burrow in holes, if they're running away from something that's trying to eat them, a predator, they'll jump into their burrows and if the thing tries to bite them from behind as they're diving in, they actually have really thick skin so that it doesn't hurt them as bad. It protects them from bites. That'd be pretty cool. They have a thick bottom. Let's do this. Just a few lines here and there. So we get the idea that this little guy's furry. There we go. I might want to make this a little bit more obvious. Does that look pretty good? Okay, I think I'm good right there. I'll just keep adding lines because it's fun. So there is our wombat friend. Now, next thing I just need to do is I need to go through and just erase all of the sketch underneath and then I will go and uh, start coloring. So we'll meet up right after that. And make sure that you go check out One Million One Month. They have so many amazing artists that have been doing drawings of these different amazing endangered animals and it's been a really, really cool project. So go make sure to check them out. And Harry is done. I love how he turned out. I <clears throat> and Harry is all colored. Awesome, I love how he turned out. It's uh, It was kind of hard with the colors because they have a very grayish brown fur. Um, actually the more 
common wombat that you've probably seen is more of an orangey or brown color. So you can go wild with whatever colors you want. I just wanted to do this one because I wanted just to let everybody know about the Northern Hairy Nosed Wombat. Well, I hope you guys had a lot of fun drawing. I know I did. Oh, but also I'm really proud of what I made. So what do I need to do? That's right. I need to write my name or my initials here on the bottom of my drawing. So there we go. And I think I am all set. All right, well, we're gonna wrap up here, but remember, we have these videos Monday through Friday, every single week, so continue to watch, subscribe, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And remember, be brave, be creative, but most importantly, be you. All right, we'll see you guys next time.